Hello boaters, welcome to Narrowboat Journeys. We're on the Trent and Mersey Canal and I've just left the visitor moorings at Wheelock and in this video I've got to go through the Wheelock flight. That's eight locks and then plus a further two locks after that all the way up to Hassel Green. And to be quite honest I'm really not looking forward to this trip. So let's have a look at the map so you can see where we are. We're near the yellow marker on the left, the start point. We've got ten locks to go through to the yellow marker on the right, which is the end point, that's Hassel Green. This whole journey from start to finish is less than two miles, but it took me four hours to do it. It was a lot of hard work, and some of these locks are pretty dangerous for solo boaters. I stayed at Wheelock for about ten days. The weather was really bad, windy every day, plus quite a lot of rain, and I just couldn't face doing the locks like that. Today it's not all that brilliant either. We're just approaching the bottom lock. As you can see, there are actually two locks. They're arranged in pairs. You could use either one, so it's whichever one's in your favour. Unfortunately for me, almost every lock I encountered was full of water, so I had to stop and empty it before I could go in. This added to the time quite a lot. If I remember correctly, this next lock was the only one I encountered that was actually empty and I could just go straight into. I will show every lock I go through, but I'm not going to show them in too much detail because at the end of the day I've got to condense a four hour trip down to about 25 minutes.
This is a disused railway line and it's been converted into like a footpath. The weather is very changeable. It wasn't too bad when I set off, but shortly afterwards we had all sleet, rain, wind, hail, the lot. I didn't show you the bit where I had to empty the lock to go in. I wish I could fast forward things like that in real life, it would make life a lot easier. Now I've mentioned that some of the locks were dangerous for solo boaters and between Wee Lock and Kidsgrove there's quite a few like that. As a solo, boat, solo boater what I normally do is I would take my boat into the lock and leave it in gear gently up against the top gate. Then I can climb up the ladder, close the lock gates, fill the lock up and because the boat's in gear it looks after itself. But on a lot of these locks there's only one ladder and it's placed in a position that I can't reach when my boat is up against the top gate. Here's the ladder, it's on the right, and it only goes part way down, look, it's recessed into the wall. So if you fell into the water here, you probably wouldn't be able even to reach that ladder. So I tried to go up to the front gate, and then I found I was a good six feet away from the ladder, and I just couldn't reach it. My boat's uh, 48 feet long and it's obviously not long enough to do that. So this is the problem, when my boat was up against the gate that's where the ladder was and I just could not get there. So I had to take my boat out of gear 
and let it drift back so that I could reach the ladder. But then you have to fill the lock extremely slowly because there's a big current that will pull your boat forwards up against the top gate. Um, and that could be quite violent if you're not careful. It was made even more tricky because, because these locks are so deep, my ropes weren't actually long enough to reach up and then reach as far as the mooring bollards. So the only place I could tie the boat to was to the actual ladder. And that's frowned upon, but there was no alternative. And it would have been too dangerous to leave the boat float around on its own in the lock. So obviously when they designed and built these twin locks, they cut a few corners price-wise. On the right here is a very short arm that leads to a boat repair yard. I don't think they sell diesel or gas or anything like that, I think it's just for boat repairs. There used to be two locks here, but no longer. The one on the right has been turned into an overflow. Again, this is another problem lock where I have to stay back from the top gate and fill it very slowly and very gently. And then there was another sleet shower.
put a glass filter in front of my camera to protect it from splashes. You don't normally see this, but virtually every time I go through a lock, I have to do this. Well, that's the eight locks of the Wee Lock lock flight done, but there's still two more locks to go before Hassle Green. The thing is, I'm actually quite tired now, so I decide to moor up here for the rest of the day and move on again the next day. Unfortunately, the weather was much worse, but I decided to move anyway because there was a storm forecast and it was going to come in on the following day. And this, as you can see, is a very exposed place to be, so I didn't want to be here then. That monstrosity up ahead is the M6 motorway. I couldn't live anywhere near that.
so I decided to stop at Hassle Green. There's some good moorings just up ahead, and it was within cycling distance of Alsager, or Alsager, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. In the next video I'll travel on to Road Heath, which is a more pleasant trip. There's still quite a few locks, but at least the weather was nice. It only remains to let the cats out. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.